Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be chit-chatting with you guys and kind of just going step by step on how I do my makeup routine. For those who don't know, I do have my license in the state of Nevada, so I'm going to try to give you guys some informative little tips and tricks that you guys can incorporate into your base routine. And yeah, let's just get right into it. Immediately when I press record, I just realized I'm wearing the same shirt as my last video, but... I'm an outfit repeater and I don't care. So I didn't even do my skin prep so my face is just literally feeling dry right now. I didn't know how to prep my skin for makeup growing up. My makeup always looked very cakey, very dry, very mattified. I need my skin prep to look super duper glowy in order for my makeup to look very very good. I start off with MAC Fix Plus. I like to drench it and then the next step I like to do serum. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Serum. I love this. This underneath your makeup is so, so good. And again, my skin is very, very dry. So just keep in mind if you're more on the oily, maybe combo skin, maybe you can uh, substitute some of these products or use just something else. But all the products that I'm going to be using are going to be very, very hydrating. That already gave my skin a little bit of a glow. Not me forgetting a whole step that I always do. Okay, I'm, I guess I'm skipping it today, but just so you guys know, I always do this one first. I, it went over my head, I forgot. But I always do Cosrx Essence first and then the serum. I'll have to skip it today because I like to do this one first. Um, but as you can tell, I go through this super duper fast. But yeah, this one first and then this one. Next, you want to do a very hydrating moisturizer. So I like to do... I kind of switch it up, but Cosrx All-in-One Cream. This underneath your makeup sits so beautifully. MAC Skin Canvas Balm. She's that girl. This one's a little bit more thick. But this, it's so beautiful under makeup as well. If you're more into like drugstore, this one has been working really good for me as well. This one's the Verst Dew Point Moisturizing Gel Cream. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to do what I usually do. This is like super duper sticky. They do have a different packaging now, which is probably a little bit more helpful. But I haven't gotten my hands on that one just yet. Give me like another month or two. <laughs> and you can drag it down. Make sure your neck is just as hydrated as well. While that is drying down, I like to do a lip balm or a lip oil. This one is the Jisoo Lip Oil. I'm not going to lie, I'm not a huge fan of their hair oil, but their lip oil is really, really good. I just went to Sephora yesterday and I didn't stock up on this. And look, look at me queda. I need a new one. But as you can tell, I love this. I don't really switch my primers too much because this one just works amazing for me. Milk Hydro Grip. Bomb. Well, like if you want an alternative, like drugstore version... These are really good, the Niacinamide Elf Power Grip. I wouldn't say it's a dupe because I think it's way thicker. However, like I said, it's a good alternative. And I apply this primer onto my T-zone, really focusing it on my cheek, cheeks, <laughs> really focusing it on my cheeks, my forehead, chin, nose, T-zone. And after this, your skin should just be looking pretty glowy. If you like to do like a highlighter underneath, right now would be the time, but me personally, I kind of just skip that. Also, right now would be a good time to add a little bit more Fix Plus if you want to just add a little bit more hydration, this, or a setting spray. Step number two would be your tools. On this one, I'm going to be a little controversial, not going to lie, because a lot of my brushes are dirty. However, clean brushes is a key to have a nice application. I'm going to show you a brush that I would not use right now because I know at this point it has way too much product, like this one. You can't use this no more, girl. This is too dirty. Makeup by Mario F4. You can tell it's not going to leave my skin streaky. Will my makeup look a little bit more flawless if it's 100% clean? Yes. But let's be a little realistic here. I'm not going to clean it every time I use it. Also, I'm going to add two other tools that I feel like change my routine. Your brushes, your sponge of choice, and then a powder puff. And I'm going to link everything below as well. Number three would be find products that work for your skin type. So I used to use products that were so mattifying and so drying. And for someone who has dry skin, it just it didn't work out. And I used to think like... Damn, why does my makeup not look like these girls? Now that I use hydrating products and glowy products, my skin has never looked better. So as a dry skin girly, a foundation that just works miracles on me, Makeup by Mario, he did his thing with this. It's a little bit dark on me, but I'm going to use it for the sake of this video. You will not believe how long I went with using like super mattifying products. Girl, I learned my lesson though. I use the shade 12O. I always like to apply my foundation with my ring finger and just go straight into the face. I don't like to apply it on the brush. I find that it makes it streaky. So applying it this way, I feel like I'm going to get a little bit more coverage. So I'm going to take my fluffy side of my F4 Makeup by Mario brush. And I kind of just do like dabbing motions. Think of it as if you had a beauty blender. If you had a beauty blender, you're not going to take it left and right. You're going to pretty much do patting motions. 
And you see how like that looks very, very seamless. And I kind of just bring it a little bit lower just because this foundation doesn't match me very, very well right now. It's not spot on. If you find that your foundation is a little too drying, all you got to do is take some Fix Plus, some setting spray. And a lot of times too, if you do it with setting spray instead of like a Fix Plus, it's also going to help with your longevity of the foundation. Another tip, if you feel like your foundation feels too cakey, too thick, you want to remove some coverage, this is where this is going to come in clutch. Take the bottom of it, make sure... There's no water coming out of this, just slightly damp. And you're just gonna go over everything. It's gonna pick up some of it, but it's not really gonna remove the coverage. You see like, it got a little tinted. You still have the coverage in there. I find that my foundation looks a little bit more flawless when I do cream contour. So this contour is such a good one. This is the Beauty Creations Natural Palette in the shade Bronze, as you can tell. I hit pan on that one, on that one. And best part, just only $14. I never, ever, ever skip cream contour. I don't care if I'm doing a natural look contour is not gonna get skipped also i will say if you don't have my face shape very round face don't contour your face like me because it's not gonna be flattering for your face shape if you have like a bigger forehead i would contour more on there if you have a more snatched jawline i wouldn't contour like i do because i don't have a jawline i'm like i try to make one <laughs> good brushes is just gonna make your life easier so number 70 by real techniques she's that girl for cream contouring if you don't have this brush go get it ever since i started using this brush i kind of stopped using all my other ones i just find that this one is a perfect size for my face shape as you can tell it's kind of the size of my cheek so i'm not gonna over blend it if this was slightly bigger i might bring the contour too low so keep that in mind when you're picking out your brush um, size. For nose contour, I'm doing E1 by Crystal Cosmetics. She has so many beautiful eye brush sets. Or not eye brush. She has a whole bunch of brush sets for such an amazing price. My fave concealers at the moment, Too Faced Multi-Use. This one never changes. This is the shade Swan. This one has been in my life for like five plus years. I always, always, always repurchase this one. This one is a new one. This is Natasha Denona in the shade N2. She's new to me, but I've been liking her. But for a flawless base, you're going to want a very hydrating concealer. Both of these are amazing on its own together. What I do, I apply my Swan shade by Too Faced to wherever I want any brightening. And then the Natasha Denona one, I either use it alone or I'll use it on this middle part just to neutralize it a tiny bit. Then I'll take Y. Sorry, but I don't know why I keep saying Y2. I'll use N2 just on this little area. Okay, before we go ahead and blend this out, I'm going to take some setting spray. This is the Stay Over by MAC. You want to let that dry down a little bit. This is pretty much just going to help with longevity. And it's also going to make it a little bit more hydrating. So everything is going to be way easier to blend out. I'm going to use my same sponge from Adesali Beauty to blend out to these areas. I always, always, always start off with the chin. And then I work my way up to... The forehead i'll leave the eyes for the end just because i feel like leaving the concealer on a little bit longer than everything else is just gonna give it a little bit more coverage and i start off with the lower part and i work my way out not really touching this little triangle i leave that little part to the end i kind of just bring it along this line right here i feel like this lifts up my face lately i've been liking this 72 brush by real techniques just is the perfect shape for this little corner and i leave it kind of like this very full coverage i love how this looks and i always leave the nose to the very end just to give more full coverage on that area because i like it to look very snatched as well i'm thinking rare beauty so i'm gonna use happy by rare beauty i usually do like two little dots if I need more, I'll add more. This thing is just really pigmented, so I like to start off little by little. And then I'm using my 241 Real Techniques brush. Only dabbing motions. You don't want to go back and forth. A lot of the times, um, you'll find that your foundation or blush, any cream product will start disappearing or separating because you're causing too much friction to the cheeks. So if you're going back and forth, it's going to start doing that. It's going to start separating. I feel like this side, for some reason, needs a little bit more. I'm just going to add one more... I was going to say one more dot, but I did add a lot of product, so I'm going to kind of bring it to this side as well. Number four would be one of the most important parts in my opinion. I truly feel the way you set your makeup is going to hit or miss. Once again, I have dry skin, so these products, you might want to switch them for other products. So before setting with powder, one of the important steps I don't like to skip is, once again, applying setting spray. After this spray, I'm going to have my setting powder. I like to use Beauty Baker Green Oats. If you have oily skin, I would recommend Huda. Or I've heard one size is amazing for my dry skin girlies. I mean, oily skin girlies. But I pour it into the lid and I shake things up so it looks a little bit more like, like fine. And I will put my powder puff into this. Once I'm done blending out my under eyes, I can just go straight into it. So again, taking my number 76 brush, 
I'm just gonna blend this out or you could use your sponge as well. But I mean, so number 72. Girl, I'm getting all my numbers mixed up. And then squint your eye a little bit. Grab your powder puff, smoothen this out. Never apply it straight into it because you're gonna apply way too much product. You wanna just do it in layers. So the first layer, you're just gonna set into the face. You don't wanna bake on just yet. Take another layer, do the same exact thing. Now, if you choose to bake, you can do it on the second layer. The first one is to set, the second one is to bake. Kinda angling this and bringing it out like so. I'm just gonna do this technique on the rest of my T-zone. I do tend to crease a lot on my left side. I've just come to the conclusion that, I mean, it's a little wrinkle, you know? I don't try to like do too much to like prevent it from creasing because I know no matter what I do, it's gonna crease, like it's a wrinkle. But I just make sure to give it some love with some powder and hope for the best. <laughs> for the rest of the face, this is my jam. Dry Skin Girlies, this is for you. If you have oily skin, I would not recommend this. I like it so much because it's a very soft setting. It's not harsh at all. It is not heavy. It is not super duper mattifying. But pretty much just doing this all over. You guys are probably thinking like, girl, when are you going to take off this concealer from your nose? But after I do all the powder, that's when I go ahead and blend this out. I just find that like at this point, the concealer is like basically almost dry. So it kind of highlights the nose more than if I were just to like do it at the beginning. Super easy to blend. And then I'll just go over it with my powder puff. I am very dry, so it's not like my nose gets oily or anything, but I just lightly set it with whatever is left on here. Right now I'm feeling really, really dry. So once again, we're going to do setting spray. Setting spray comes in clutch. Always do setting spray after powder. It's gonna look so, I like me with all the powder here. It's gonna look so much better. I love this shirt, but damn dude, it gets a little comfy sometimes. <laughs> this product right here, life changing. This right here is what I want to contour palette in Dulce de Leche. As you can tell, she's very loved. <laughs> but let me just show you guys how good this product is. I feel like bronzing is definitely my fave step in makeup because it brings all the warmth into my face. And I don't know, I've said this before, you're either a bronzer girly or you're either a blush girly. I will forever be a bronzer girly. As much as I love my blush, I look forward to the bronzer part. Bronzer, I'm like, give it to me, I can't wait. I am just looking forward to it. Are you not gonna tell me that that doesn't look so much better, Eddie? I just feel like myself now. Now number five to a flawless space would be finishing touches. So right now I did my bronzer and I feel like it got a little low. So adding these little finishing touches is just going to make everything look a little bit more complete, a little bit more put together, and a little bit more, like, professional? Is that the correct word I'm looking for? I don't know, but you probably get what I mean. Pretty much just going to take a little bit more of my loose powder, again with my powder puff, and I'm going to bake underneath. Okay, next up, I'm going to go ahead and do blush, and then we'll talk a little bit more about finishing touches. Because I did do pink tone for my cream blush, I'm thinking of doing She's That Girl by Patrick Ta. I'm gonna use my Morphe V106 brush and just pressing it in. And again, just little light hand motions, circular. And you just wanna dab this on. This color is like very natural looking. It's nothing over the top, but I just feel like it looks so gorgeous. Like such a pretty everyday color. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the baking powder. So this next step is something else that I do involve into my routine. As you can kind of tell, there's like a harsh line right here. Another little finishing step that I do is mid-tone blushing. So I will do a lighter shade in between this, just so it can kind of blend a little bit better to the under eye. So for that, I'm gonna take Primus and Petunia by Edison Beauty. It's also that girl. For this one, I'm gonna do my 82 Ariel brush. And I'm just gonna press it into this one with a little bit of that, flatten out the product and i will just take this right above the last blush shade i feel like this is just going to make it look a little bit more gradient you're not going to have any harsh lines and because it is lighter you can take it like almost a little bit more messy if you can't tell me this side just doesn't look a little bit more seamless than over here another tip grab your brightening side from the wet amount palette or you could do loose powder grab a powder puff now this one really press it in and you're going to brighten up your under eye with the same powder, you're going to bring it out and you're going to go a little bit above your blush shade if you find that you brought it down too low. Just take your blush brush again and go over it. This is basically just going to diffuse both colors together. I feel like I like how that looks now. I think it looks so much more seamless than this side. I will be right back. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the makeup look. I will be back to do like some last minute touches and then show you guys what we created. Okay, I finished doing the makeup. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do some last minute touches. So there's not much left, but I do like to add some of the brightening color from the What I Want to Contour palette 
And I just like to add this underneath my eyes. It's gonna give me coverage, but it's also gonna brighten up my under eyes. And you can add a little bit more onto your chin. And I like to do a little bit on the forehead. And the brush I'm using is A14 by Makeup by Ariel. Now, personally, I think I'm gonna leave my nose mattified today. I think I did a pretty mattified look, so it would kind of look a little silly if I added a nose highlight. But when I decide to do nose highlight, this is the one that I usually always use in like all of my posts. It's Soft and Gentle by MAC. Such a pretty color. But like I said today, I think I'm going to keep it mattified. To tie everything together, you want to go ahead and put setting spray one more time. I think this one I just do like a lighter layer. I already have so many layers of setting spray throughout the makeup routine. So one layer is fine. Let's actually take these little clips off so we can see the full glam. Honestly, why were the clips kind of a vibe? This is what it looks like. I'm so obsessed with how this came out. And I am going to add all the details from start to finish, from makeup to skincare, everything, on the details in the description. So if you guys are interested in trying any of that out, I will put that down there. And I hope this video does help you guys a little bit. I kind of suck at explaining stuff sometimes, but if I can help even just with like one little thing, that would make me happy. I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope you guys have a great one, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!